In Genesis chapter 5, verse 20, 21 to 24. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and beget Matusalach. And Enoch walked with God after he beget, beget Matusalach three hundred years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. Now, this is wonderful example. Enoch is wonderful example of what we have to do to what we have to be today. You see, he lived sixty-five years, and it is not mentioned that he walked with God. And it is said that he beget somebody. He beget a son. And you see, we can be Christians, we can be good people, but at the same time, we may not walk with God. Just to be good Christian doesn't mean that you walk with God. And just because you have a fruit doesn't mean that you walk with God. He beget son. But after that, it, it is said that he walked with God, after this son, he, be, he walked with God 300 years. And he beget sons and daughters. And I believe that we as Christians, if we walk with God, we will have much more fruit than if we walk alone. You see, he beget sons and daughters. Much fruit. In John, uh, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, Jesus says, and I will open even there, Jesus Christ says in these cha uh, verses, 15, chapter 4 and 5, Abide in me, and I in you. In the Italian Bible, it is said, Abide in me and I will abide in you. It is like you take the first step. Abide in me. And abide, abide means uh, stay continually in my presence. Do not walk out. We know sometimes we enter into the presence of God for a while. But Jesus said, do not come only for a time. Learn how to stay in my presence continually. So he says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. As the branch cannot be a fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So he said, if you are branch, and we may be branches, but we are not in the vine. We are not in fellowship, in closeness with Christ. We may be branches, but there will be no fruit, because the fruit doesn't come from the branch. The fruit comes from the vine, and the power comes from the vine. So that's why we are absolutely dependent on the vine. And the next verse, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. If we want to do much, we have to be in close relationships with our Master Jesus Christ. Without Him, we can do nothing. There are many things that are done today in the name of Jesus, but they are not from the vine. Many things come not from the power of the Spirit. And you see 
the, the Lord says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Everything that is not done by the Holy Spirit is wasted. Much money, much labor, much time is wasted. And Christ said that um, if we gather without him, we disperse. So the first thing that we have to care, it is about our relationships with him. Okay. And now here, let us see Enoch. He walked with God 300 years and beget sons and daughters. He became more fruitful because he walked with God. The walk with God will not bring, it will not take a time and effort and make you weak. It will make you strong. The Bible says if you, if you are with a wise man, you will become wise. If you are with the wise God, you will become wise. If you, if you are with the strong God, you will become strong. We need the power of God. And the Bible says, the Lord is my strength. It is not something, it is the Lord. The Lord is my strength. If I am near the Lord, I'm, I'm strong. If I am far from the Lord, I'm weak. So the Lord is our strength and we have to be close to Him, even in Him. Okay. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God to him. And this is marvelous, marvelous thing because, you see, every person on this earth dies. But for Enoch, he said that he was took, God took him, and he was not, but he didn't die. And I believe that if we walk with God, we will not see death, we will see life, because He is life. Jesus said, I am the life and the resurrection. That's why, if we want life, we have to seek Jesus. He is the life. Amen. Now you see, Enoch is an example. And we may see many examples in the Bible. Let us take Abraham in James chapter 2, James chapter 2, 23rd verse. The Bible says, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I like very much two things here. Number one, Abraham believed God. He didn't believe about God. Because somebody told him about God. Some doctrine about God. He believed the personality of God. He knew personally God. He believed God. Go into different churches and you will see different Jesus. I believe that the peop if the people know Christ, they can follow the real Christ and not some doctrine. We need to know Him and in John chapter 17, verse 3, it is said that this is eternal life to know you, Jesus said about the Father, and whom you have sent, your Son. So this is eternal life. Eternal life is not something, it is someone. Eternal life, the resurrection and the life is Jesus. Without him, there is no life. Even if we claim to be Christians, if we do not have Him, if we are not in Him, we have no life. In Him is life. In Him is life. He is the life. So we, we, we need, we must know Him. There are so many things spoken today. So many doctrines different. But if we do not know personally God, 
if we do not have the encounter with him, we are nothing. This is the most important thing. Not so much activities, so much words, personal relationships. It seems like today the most difficult things are the relationships. Relationships between people, between even churches and, and in families and everywhere, relationships are so difficult. And this shows that the people do not have right relationships with God. Because, you see, Jesus, uh, uh, the Bible says that if you cannot love your brother whom you see, how can you love your, your God whom you cannot, cannot see? It doesn't mean that you have to go and love your brother and then you love God. It means that this is a criteria that we do not know God as we are supposed to, do, to, to know Him. Because if we know Him, we'll know the love. Because God is love. And then we'll know how to love each other. Because God is love. Now, here, first thing I said is uh, that Abraham believed God. And then the second thing, he was called the friend of God. The friend of God. It's so good. So many people were at that time on the earth, but there was one friend of God, Abraham, who knew God personally, who was led and guided by God. He followed him everywhere. And you see, we cannot see Abraham ministering very much. What was his ministry? Why is he in the Bible? He didn't do any great work. But he was friend of God. He spoke with God. And God spoke with him. And they walked together. And the Lord was fulfilling many things with him. Uh, when, when, when the children of, Egypt, of, of Israel were, were in Egypt, and God said to, to Pharaoh, leave my people to go to minister to me. And at, at last they were... They, they went to minister, and, and I read, and I cannot see what, is, what they ministered to the Lord. They just followed the cloud. This was the main ministry. Their main ministry was to walk in the presence of God all the time. The cloud moves, they move. The cloud stops, they stop. They had to be together with God. This is the main ministry, following the Lord. Following the Lord and being in His presence, in His will, continually. Okay, let's move on. Um, in James again, 4th chapter, verse 8. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. It seems that we wait the Lord to draw nigh to us. He says, you draw nigh to me. How can we do it with our hearts? And, and he, he, he says, cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. So we have to come to Him with our hearts. This is the way we can go to Him. Not with our lips. You know Isaiah 29, 13 says, These people come to me. They come close to me with their lips. But their hearts are far from, him, from me. In vain they, they worship me. Because their hearts are far. Only the words are near. Our hearts have to come near the Lord. This is what He desires. I would like us to to open to Psalm 27, verse 4. Psalm 27. Verse 4. It is Psalm of David. He says, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And so on. And verse 4. 
One thing yet I desired of the Lord. The first thing and the only thing David desired of the Lord was that I may dwell, not only come, but dwell continually. See the man with the heart after God. What he wants, what he desires. To dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my, my life. And you know the house of the Lord is the church. The house of the Lord is the place where the Lord is. Where the Lord lives. It means to be together with the Lord. It means to be with, in His presence. He says to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He doesn't speak about heaven. He speaks all the days of my life. Here. We need to live in His presence here to behold the beauty of the Lord. If we want to see the face of the Lord, we have to enter into His presence. Out of His presence, we cannot see His face. In His presence, we are near, we can see the face of the Lord. And to behold, He says, the beauty of the Lord. He's beautiful. And to inquire in his temple. And then he speaks about security, protection from the Lord. But this is something that follows. Today we are looking for security, but forget the Lord. The Lord is our security. He's our tower, strong tower. He's our stronghold that we can hide in. He is our security. In, hidden in His presence, we are hid from the enemy. This is the most beautiful place to hide yourself. It is like in, in the time, you see, when the, when the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea and the Egyptians came behind, then the cloud of the presence of God that led them came behind them. And for the Egyptians, it was darkness. And for the Israel people, it was light. And you see, the presence of the Lord is like a wall between us and the enemy. And it keeps us from the enemy. Why some things happen? Why do some things happen? Even with Christians. I believe that if we walk into His presence, He will protect us in such a way that, we'll, that we wouldn't go home before time. We'll go at the appoint, appointed time. You see Jesus? They wanted to kill Him many times, but it was not His time because He was in the will of God and nobody could touch Him. Touch him. He said, the hour came, and when the hour came, they took him because he gave his life. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. This is a different thing. If we are in the will of God, nobody will take our life. No Iraq. Nothing like that. Because thousands may fail at your right side. And 10,000 from the other side. But it shall not come nigh thee, said the Bible. He that dwelleth in the secret place, in the secret place of the presence of the Most High, shall abide continually under the shadow of protection, under the covering of the Almighty. So first is abiding in, the, in Him, in His presence, and then is His power. His power is protecting us because He will give charge to His angels to keep thee in all thy ways. In all thy ways. If we are in the will of God, we'll be protected. This is the best way. And the Bible says that cursed is the man who trusts man and makes uh, arm 
this power, human power, fleshly power, it brings curse. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He will never cease to give fruit. And in Isaiah 30 chapter and 31 speaks about children who are rebellious. They are children, but they are rebellious because they trust in the power of Egypt, in the power of the world. Trust in the things of the world and not in God. We are people who have to be like Enoch, like Abraham, walking continually with our God and trusting in his shadow. He will protect us always. He will never forget us. Whatever happens, he will never forget us. And, and there is another thing about Elijah and Elisha. Elisha was a, a disciple of Elijah. And I believe in this case we may say Elijah is a... a we may say Elijah is a symbol of God, of Jesus. And we may say Elisha is a symbol of us. Elisha ministered to Elijah all the time. Ministered. He poured out water on his hands. He was always with him walking. And there came a time when Elijah said, Elisha, stay here. I want to go there, to Bethel, to Gilgal. But Eli Elisha said, no, I will never leave you. I will come with you. Wherever you go, I will be there with you. You see, our Lord hides himself. He hides himself because he likes us to seek him. The Bible wants us to be aggressive in our faith. It says, ask. This is aggression. It's not say, stay there. It says, ask. It says, seek. And you shall find. Knock. The same happened with Elisha. He walked after Elijah. He sought him. He wanted to be continually with him. He wanted to take everything from him. If we are the same with our Lord Jesus, to walk continually with him, to ask him about everything, to want to be closer to him, and to take everything that he can give us, then we'll be strong, we'll be wise, and then we can give many things to other people. Because you cannot give something that you don't have. We need Jesus. He is the source of life. He is the source of power, of healing, of deliverance. We see today many words spoken, but not much power. The, uh, but the kingdom of God is not in words, in power. Many doctrines, powerless, powerless, because the power is in the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord is precious. And the Lord doesn't walk so lightly with the people. We can think about the presence, and yet the presence may not be with us. I don't speak about presence that the Lord is everywhere, and that the Lord is in the church. I speak about this tangible presence that is so precious. This oil that can destroy every yoke and every bondage. Because you see, Jesus was so anointed that the people touched his, his clothes and they were healed. Peter walked and his shadow healed the people. You see, Paul, they took his, his clothes and they brought them to sick people and they were healed and people were delivered. Such power was through these people. But they paid the price to be close with God. And today we need, the world needs people who really, really, really know God. Not people who speak about God, but people who speak with God and from God. We need people who, uh, 
that really do something for the kingdom of God. And the spirit of God is the spirit of reality. This is the spirit that will bring life. And the Bible says, who, he who is thirsty, let him come to me, said Jesus. Let him come to me. And then from his belly shall come rivers of living water. If we come to him, we have really these rivers of living water to give to this dying world. I believe that if we have this, we really can draw the world into the kingdom. Uh, today I, I read this passage where Jesus went into synagogue and I wanted to preach this, but I believe the Lord moved the things. And uh, Jesus preached and there was a person possessed and he cried out and Jesus said, come out of him and then uh, the people were shocked. And then it is said that his fame went all about all the region. He didn't uh, he, he didn't speak about himself. He didn't speak much about himself. But the work of the Lord is the best thing to, to make the gospel popular to the people, that the people may believe. If, uh, if real things happen, it will do much more than many words that are spoken today. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray and stand up and worship the Lord. And I would like us to really to expect something good from God today. Expect something, something good from God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. And we ask you, Lord, to touch the people. Touch the people here, Lord. Let the people that need healing or deliverance to be touched by you because only your anointing can destroy the yoke. If there is somebody who needs you, Lord, please touch this person. Meet this person, Lord. We pray for salvation, for healing for deliverance, and we give you all the glory for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And thank you, Lord.